Don't do it. Now, now you, you think I'm just calling your name, but look up there. Jesus. I'm talking to you for real. Because he dealt with me concerning you. There's more in you than playing the keyboard. Yes, God. You hear me? I'm not telling you nothing you don't know. You already know this. You're a young man now. And the Lord has imparted gifts in you to help other people. Go to work. You hear me? All right. You just smile and go to work. The power of your greatness potentially ends on one simple thing. Are you available to God? Yes, Do you understand the level of the oppression of the children of Israel? Faith at the hand of the Midianites. Prisoners in the promised land. The problem is not in the Midianites. The problem is not the world around them. But the problem is that the children of Israel has stopped being available to God. Now, you know, it's amazing, Jalen, amen, when we first become saved, you know, we tell God, whatever you got for me, God, or we, we, we be, we be, prophet Ronald, we be, we be kid of God, whatever you got for me to do, Tyra, I, I'm ready to do it, God, I'm ready, I'm ready, whatever you got for me, then all of a sudden, a year passed, two years passed, and we go through trials and tribulations along the way, and we allow stuff and things and people to Hinder our assignment with God. Let me tell you something. You don't have time this year to play with your assignment. You, you, you do not have time. And then I want you to really hear me. Amen. Availability is a greater commodity than giftedness. Amen. If you make yourself available to God, amen, you're going to run past the folks that's gifted. Because God is setting your gift this year. He's setting your availability. And so you got to make yourself available. Look at somebody around and say, make yourself available. Come on, tell them again, make yourself available. Amen. Amen. You have no idea. God will anoint you even more when you make yourself available. I told them that night in the revival. Amen. There are some of us that God is anointing us afresh. Amen. He will anoint you afresh when you make yourself available to him. Amen. Because many of you, you have got to deal with your dreams and stuff and Amen. But the question is, what you going to do when you get out the dream? Yeah, that, that's what the, 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 the thing lies, what you going to do. So our text in the book of Luke, amen, the fifth chapter, Jesus just healed Peter's mother-in-law. He had healed the sick and cast out demons. The next day, he went to a deserted place to rest. The people flocked to hear him. Jesus then went to the cities of Galilee to preach. They flocked to hear him there. Now he's at the Sea of Galilee. So it was that the multitude pressed about to take that little highlight of this, about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Now Jesus could have easily said, well, I don't have a boat out here. And the people were that hungry. Let me tell you something. Amen. If you read the book of Luke, the people were that hungry prophets. They were needing what Jesus had to offer. Now, he could have easily said to Kari, amen, I don't have a boat to go and teach the people, so I'm going to just go back home, I'm going to do all that. But you've got to figure out, how do I get to the people and feed them what God is giving me to do? You, it, it, he, he, he's put the plan in our hand. And so, and so uh, uh, then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put... I got a letter from the land. And he sat down and talked to much to from the boat. So he decided, amen, uh, Jalen, there's two in the boat there. They're not mine, but I might as well, since the fisherman gone, amen, I might as well get in one of the boats. That's right, that's right. Because there's a crowd of folks that's waiting on the word. So what you going to do? When God showed you that crowd of folks, that y'all. What you gonna do when he show that crowd of folk this year? And you don't see no way in your mind how I'm gonna do this. God said you got to figure out a plan. How do I get to doing the assignment of God and feeding the people like God has gifted in me? Because what's gonna go on if you don't figure out a way, you're gonna blow up from pregnancy inside. Lay your hands on my stomach for me, Pastor. God said, I did not impregnate you. 
not to feed the people. And if he ain't showed it, I believe he's gonna show it. If he can show it, he's gonna show you a kid. And it looked like there about two or three people went to try to help him and could not help him. Because the assignment was yours. God said, fulfill the assignment we give. Whatever you do, fulfill the lady had my hand. Start doing, he started increasing. 
Amen. And if you want God to increase in you, just be obedient to his word. The Bible says, if ye be willing and obedient, uh, ye shall eat the good of the land. So look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to be obedient to the voice of God. So the last and final point, point is, when you become available, you've got to prepare yourself for trials and tribulations. So as I make my exit today, I want you to know that in order for God to use you in this season, you must make yourself available to him to be used. Now look at your neighbor and point your finger in the face and say, neighbor, in order for God to use you this year, you got to first make yourself available to God. But the Bible says, so then faith coming by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So I said, Lord, I got time into available. So God said, when the people hear this word Sunday, and they've been slow along the way, they're going to hear the word of God. And whatever they're hearing, they walk with me. They're going to shift some along the way. So the Bible said, not be slow in business, but fervent in spirit, fervent the Lord. Why? Because the Bible said, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy a peculiar people uh, that ye should show forth uh, the praises of him uh, who has called you out of darkness uh, into this marvelous life. Uh, point your name again uh, at a neighbor, your finger at a neighbor, uh, and say, Look at here, neighbor. Uh, don't forget about last year. Uh, whatever you didn't do last year, uh, put it behind you uh, because God. Is giving you uh, a fresh start uh, this year. Uh, please allow the Lord uh, to anoint you afresh. God uh, is going to give you uh, a fresh anointing. Uh, be available uh, unto God uh, because the Bible says, uh, I know the thoughts uh, and the plans uh, that I think. Uh, Lord, you uh, said the Lord uh, thoughts of peace uh, and not of evil uh, to give you uh, and expect it in. Uh, and I said, Lord, uh, as I make my exit, uh, can I stay with uh, Jeremiah? Uh, for the Lord uh, had called Jeremiah, uh, but in the beginning uh, he was afraid. Uh, they called me with a young boy, but sooner or later, he made up in his mind that I'm ready, God, to do what you should do. I'm ready, God, to answer the call. Now the question I have for you, are you ready to answer the call? Are you ready to say, Lord, whatever, whatever, Lord, whatever, whatever, I'm ready, Lord, to answer the call. Jeremiah, God had encouraged him that before you came out of your mother's womb, I had already ordained you. And there's some of you in here today before you came out of your mother's womb. God has already uh, ordained you uh, to be a prophet uh, to the nation. Uh, now the thing I want you to know uh, before I leave, uh, you got to stand up uh, and get in your place uh, because uh, A.T. and Uncle them, uh, just and brother them, uh, need what you have. Uh, shout yes, God. Uh, and the Bible says, uh, after Jeremiah, uh, the accept is called uh, sooner or later. Uh, them old straight folks uh, when they're talking about him, uh, generalizing his name. Uh, and Jeremiah said, uh, God uh, ain't gonna preach 
show, oh, huh? ain't gonna make this a uh, of oh, your name no more, huh? but I want you to know, huh? when God uh, has a calling on your life, huh? you got to be obedient, huh? you got to be willing huh? to do what God uh, has called you to do, huh? and the Bible said huh? that the word of the Lord uh, never like fire, huh? shut up in his bones, huh?
shall you do? Be ye steadfast. And unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Because you got to know if your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now if you believe it, then shout it at God. But I know along the way, David had a lot of work before God, but he had some ups and downs. But one thing about it, his mind was made up for God. I live and for God I die. You got to get an Isaiah spirit. Lord, if you need somebody, here am I. Send me go. Here am I. Shout yes, 